Hi, my name is Kate Gunby. I'm a sociology PhD student at the University of Arizona. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a video about how to append, merge, and collect data in data. Um, append and merge are very helpful tools uh, when you're combining data sets to make a bigger one. And then collapse is helpful if you're somehow combining your data into a smaller data set, or if you're saving summaries off of your data into separate data sets. For most of the examples today, I'm going to be using very small data sets that, so that you can actually see the changes more easily on the computer screen. Um, but these tools are especially useful if you're working with really massive, like census size data sets. So I'll also include a couple of really big data sets so that you can get a sense of how this works on a larger scale. Before we get into the main content of the video, I want to talk briefly about the importance of protecting your data when you're trying out these different commands. Um, so as you're kind of experimenting with this on your own, you want to be sure to enter the command preserve before you actually do anything to the data. Um, obviously, right now I don't have a data set open, so preserve is not going to do anything. But if I did have a data set open, this would create um, kind of a temporary holding point in the data so that if I make any changes, I can then um, hit restore and that will return me to the original data set before I made any of the changes. So if you're adding things, or especially if you're taking away things from your data set um, and are going to possibly want to go back in time to where you were before you made that change, be sure to use preserve and restore um, consistently while you're working. Another thing that's important to note about preserve and restore is that you cannot preserve multiple times before hitting restore. So if you make a change and then decide that you want to be able to go back to that point in time again, um, you actually won't be able to hit preserve a second time unless you've already hit restore in between. Another way that you can preserve the data is using the sort preserve command. This allows you to preserve the order that the data is actually sorted in. And so that way, if you're changing the order or resorting on a different variable, um, you can just put in the sort preserve command to get back to the original way that the data was sorted. So now that we've gone over that, I'm going to actually start talking about append. Append is really useful when you're combining data sets that have the same variable but different cases. So basically, you're using append when you're adding new rows to your data set and you're keeping the columns the same. Um, so I'm going to open up a, um, a data set and this is our short version of the 1991 South African census. So I'll browse it very quickly so you can get a sense of what this looks like. So as you can see, we've only got 15 cases and we've got, I think, 33 variables in here. Another way that you could um, find this data is describe, which will give us more information about the data set. Um, and summarize is another way. And so if we want to append a data set onto the end of there, we basically just type in append and the name of the data set that we want to use. So I'm just going to copy paste to make things a little bit easier. Um, but I'm appending using the census B data set. Oh, and we want to do append using. And so you'll see we get all of these notifications telling us that a bunch of these labels are already defined. Um, this is not a problem. This is actually good because we're adding new cases with the exact same label name. So um, it's good that the labels are, are already defined. So now to check our work, we're going to, I'm going to browse the data again so you can just get a sense of what this looks like. So you see now that we have a number more cases that have been added, but we still have the same number of variables. And another way that we can confirm this again is to hit describe, which again shows us that we have our 33 variables, but we're now up to 33 observations. And you can basically just keep on appending data um, indefinitely. So I'm actually going to add one more. So we'll do census C short. And so again, you see that the labels are already defined. If we drag the data, 
we find that we have 42 observations now and still have our same 33 variables. Um, and I'll browse it one more time so you can get a sense of what that looks like. So again, you're using append when you're basically adding more cases, but you have the same number and names for your variables. So when you are using the append function, you do want to be very careful. Um, first, that you have enough memory so that Stata can actually handle the addition. So um, after we after I finish talking through this, I'll do the same thing one more time, but using the full versions of census A, B, and C, you can get a sense of just how big the data sets can get. Um, so be sure you have your memory set high enough when you're starting off. Uh, another thing you want to be sure of is that the names of your variables are the same across the different data sets. Um, so if we go back to the browser, you can see that um, you know, these, if we were to open up each data set individually, it would have the exact same variable name. Um, and if you are unsure if you have the same variable name, an easy way to check is to use something like describe and then compare them across the different cases. Um, you also want to make sure that your variables uh, that have the same name are actually the same data. And so you can use describe for this as well to make sure that, um, so for example, if let's say you had a variable that was um, age and one data set had your age in years and the other one had your age in months, Data is not going to know that, and so it could combine those and say that you have one age variable, but you're actually going to have a different measurement for different cases depending on which data set they originated in. So you want to make sure that you have the same um, data or that the same data is being described in each of the different data sets that you're adding together. Another thing you want to be really careful with is making sure that the data types that you're using are actually in the same format. So here I've opened up the census A short data again, but I actually have one of the variables that's a string instead of a numeric variable. Um, and so this is going to be a different type than the variables for all of the other um, census cases that I'm going to try to append onto it. So I'm just going to show you what happens if we try to append the data sets when the variables are in different types. So we're going to append with census B. And they tell us that batch number is float in the using data and the using data. Um, so this is great because it's prevented us from actually uh, adding this new data set that we didn't have in the same um, or there was a variable that wasn't the same type. Let me show you what this looks like from the other side. So we're going to clear, and then we're going to actually start by using the B data set. And then we'll append using the A. Data set. And again, it tells us that the master data set, so the one that we're starting with, is not the same as um, how the variable looks in the using data set. So the good thing about Stata preventing us from going on to the next step um, is that basically we're not able to accidentally add data where the, the new appended data is not going to show up. So the way Stata used to work was that there would be this very minor error message where it would say note um, and then kind of just this brief message saying that your data wasn't actually the data that you wanted, but it didn't really make this clear. And so it was pretty easy to add on or append a new file with data that was going to be missing. So if you're using an older version of Stata, or even if um, an append goes through and you want to be extra sure that everything looks just right, then um, what you should do is check your missing value counts every time after you append make sure that everything's been added correctly. The other thing you can do is you can search the log file for a note. So do Control F and then note. 
Um, and so that way you can find if there is some sort of a note that state has given you that might not jump out, but will actually help alert you to a major problem in your data set. Um, another way to prevent this is to make sure to load every data set that you want to append and then actually go through and check for string variables in each of those data sets. Another thing that's worth noting when you're appending data is that you don't need to sort the data because the case order doesn't matter when you're adding the new data. Um, so just to give you a sense of what this looks like. Right now we're browsing the data set and we see that the age variable um, is not sorted in any way. It's um, just kind of random. It's the, the data set's sorted based on a different variable. So what I'm going to do is um, sort by age and show you that this isn't going to actually change anything when we add to the data set. So we sort by age, and then when we open the browser, we see now that it starts at age 10 and goes up to age 74. Um, and so then we'll, we'll uh, append using the census B data set. And then we'll browse it again. And so here we see that this original data set is in order, um, but the data set we've added on is not sorted by age. Um, but it doesn't really matter because we aren't, we don't need the data to be in any particular order since we're adding on to the end. As long as the variables are in a consistent order, there's not going to be any sort of problem adding new cases to the bottom. So then finally, as I promised, I'm going to show you how you would append using a much larger data set. So this is from the South African 1991 census. It was actually separated into about 10 different pieces because it was too much, um, too many cases to include in one large data set. And so in order to properly analyze the data, you need to actually append each of the pieces together. So you have all of the cases in one location. Um, so I've already opened the census a data set, and I'm actually going to preserve it in case we need to go back. And so then we're going to um, quickly describe what the data looks like. So again, you see we have these 33 variables, but we have 2,163,392 observations. Um, and there's going to be even more observations that we're going to be adding on. So we'll append, we'll append using the um, census B data. And it's going to take a minute because it's so many cases that we're adding together. And so you see that we get this already defined for all of these different variables which again is exactly what we want because it's the same variables, we're just adding multiple cases. Um, I should also note that I already had my memory set to about two gigabytes um, so that we could handle this massive amount of data because um, as you can see, even the, the first, adding the first data set, only 86% of the memory, which was two gigabytes, was free after that. So if we keep on adding more pieces, we're going to need more and more memory to handle the size of this data set. Um, so I'm going to describe what we have so you can see how much has actually been added to this data set. So now we're up to um, almost four and a half million observations, and we still have the same 33 variables. And then um, I'll append one more time using census C, just so you can see how this process would work. Um, so we'll append one more time. Again, the variables are already defined. And if we describe the data, we see that we're now up to 6 million, approximately 500,000 observations. And so, um, and we're already using, you know, almost half of the memory. Um, so this is just to give you a sense of really how big you can make your data set when you're appending pieces of um, the same kind of master uh, project into one large data set. Um, keep watching and I'll show you how to merge data and then also how to collapse data.